Welcome back to the Emotional Support Penguins podcast with your host, Joel and Amanda. <laughs> we just started out before the recording with that energy, and so mm-hmm. I just thought, you know, just roll that bad boy into the podcast. It did surprise me that that's how you started. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we, we, were already, we were already there. Um, you know, Emotional Support Penguins podcast. Because sometimes you just need to stop, reset, and waddle on out. Um, stop, drop, and waddle. And, uh, you know, this is going to be encouragement for your week. Um, and we're just we're just happy to be here um, talking about mental health, talking about kind of how to encourage each other, uplift each other, um, and live in a way that is going to be fulfilling um, and to help others around you. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy to be here, happy to bring some silly energy <laughs> I feel like it's it, the day started very chaotic. Mm-hmm. We, um, I had, didn't bring the formula with me when I was taking our baby and then forgot the shoes. Like, I just forgot a bunch of stuff this morning. Mm-hmm. And so I had to come back. Uh, and then, you know, it just started a little chaotic. So I needed a reset. So I took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about, we've talked about this before. I'm a power napper. Like, mm-hmm. that solves a lot of problems for me. Yes. It does. It does. Even I took a nap today. Yeah. I took a 30 minute, but my kind of naps are like, I'm face down on the couch with TV rolling, like give me 30 minutes and then Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll rally. Yeah. Um, well, this has nothing to do with the podcast. It's just, this is just who we are and we're just talking. You might know (laughs) this, the camera's different because this week it's, we're seeing a trend of forgetting things. Mm -hmm. I went to charge my battery and I left it at work. And so we're using a different camera. So if the camera angle looks different, maybe you like it better and you're like, Joel, you guys should do this more often. This is closer. (laughs) It's a wider angle lens. Mm -hmm. So it's different. Uh, much older camera, so who knows yeah. the quality will be any good. But you know, you guys aren't here to see how pretty we are. Although, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're here to you know hear us chat. So, yes. well, Amanda, what do you want to talk about today? What do um, we have planned? We decided to do one a little more on the I don't want to say fun side, but it kind of is a little more on the fun side. It's <laughs> it's it's uh it's one that we are all I think actively engaging in yeah ev- probably every day yeah um and that is social media yeah. and social media's effect on our mental health yeah. and something i just said to joel when I, when i was uh looking through and reading some articles and stuff um one of the things that i found absolutely crazy was i found this like really big abstract article mm. um written in 2020 and um by the nih so reputable Um, And they, at that point in time, said that you could not find any direct correlations between the use of social media and mental health. Mm. Like there were, you know, something not there was just not enough data. And I said to him, how weird is it that at that point, um, I think the big difference was most of the generation that had used social media started somewhere in the middle of their lives, whereas now the data is covering kids that, you know, have never not known social media. And yeah, it's like it, just a short, short We're just span. a little bit older, but now it's weird thinking that people that were born in the year 2000 mm-hmm. have already graduated college and are right. like having kids themselves. Right, yes. <laughs> and, yes. And so, you know, being social media, like largely 2006, 2007, um, where like the big ones when Facebook and MySpace started becoming very commonplace, mm-hmm. Um, now anyone born after 2007, 2008 has had it their entire life. Right. And so that's where now the 2024, they're doing more and more of these studies and they're finding, oh, you know, we've always like suspected it. And, you know, there's always going to be the one doom and gloom people that are like, social media is going to rot your brain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're going to talk today a little bit about the pros and cons, what that looks like. But we want to. Because there are benefits as yeah, well. And 100%. that's the thing. If you just like all things. Um, there are pros, moderation. there are cons. Yeah, and if you do it in moderation, if you do it correctly, if yeah. you protect yourself and know mm-hmm. yourself well, um, you know, there's a good and a bad way to do it. Yeah, we're social cre- creatures. Yeah, and just we humans in general. And we require being with other people. Mm-hmm. We talked about this a lot, but no man is an island. You know, we need those interactions mm-hmm. when we talked about last week with loneliness. Yeah. And social media is one way to help, um, you know, help with that. 
but it is the two-edged sword, mm-hmm. a blessing and a curse, where it can be, um, you know, a superficial version of that. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So what, 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 do you, what ways can social connections help us? Um, I mean, that's just one of the, you know, main bases of everything, right? So mm-hmm. like connecting with other people will help you um, stress, anxiety, fe- you know, loneliness, like mm-hmm. we talked about, um, and just improving just our overall well-being yeah. and outlook. Um, I don't think that anyone would actually love to be 100% alone 100% of the time. Yeah, I think sometimes people say, oh, they're hermits or they, you know, they don't, they don't mm-hmm. want any interaction. But then, you know, deep down, at least something. There's in some the... <laughs> kind of touch base somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So we talk a lot about mental health. Um, I like the way uh, in the notes here how mm-hmm. you kind of define some things. Yeah. And so sometimes we'll talk about later we have an episode on the mental health stigma. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to go real deep into mental health and why it is the way that it is kind of at least in our Western culture, the mm-hmm. way that it is. Yeah. But how do you take a look at mental health? So I just reading a bunch of things. I know that for me personally, and this could just be me and you guys are like, Amanda, you're crazy. Um, When I think of mental health, the very first thing I think of is, okay, it's all about how I'm feeling. And that is like, and yeah, things branch off of that. But that is the like overwhelming, you know, that I get from that is that it's all about your feelings. But what I came across as I was doing, like looking into stuff for this one, it really is important to point out your mental health is not just about how you're feeling um it's it's about just like a an overall state of well-being and how you understand yourself and how you understand your abilities and how you can or cannot do things um how you solve everyday problems like what how do you approach things how do you see them do you cast a positive light on things or do you cast a negative one normally Um, Do you work well with others? Do you work well alone? Um, Are you making a significant contribution to your community, whether it's like your family is a little community or your friends? Like, is that something that you actively seek to engage in? And all of that is is like a big ball of what kind of what influences mental your mental health yeah and what yeah. makes you you and that's why it's so important like mental health is just like any other medical thing that hinders you from your connections that hinders you from working mm-hmm. you know and, and taking out that stigma and say like it's just like if you were to break your leg and you're not able to work right if you're having mental health issues that's going to take away from your productivity that's going to take away from your things mm-hmm. and so finding out those things that you can map out and work on is there. So one thing that can happen that can be kind of a negative effect on social, on our uh, mental health is social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is, we've talked about how this has kind of been a debate over the years. Yeah. Um, you know, you have people that are, are really against it. Um, you have people that are, are hugely for it. Um, but we know that social networking and connecting with other people is like is is a good thing mm-hmm. for our mental health, right? And it's helpful, and especially you know if you own a business or or some type of thing, social media could be your Absolutely. job, you know, yep. a huge chunk of your job. I work with a lot of digital media stuff, and that's a huge part of what we do. Um, so. I'm not telling you to stop it. <laughs> and I know a lot of the time when we think about social media and our impact, honestly, our first reaction is probably that like, oh, yeah, it probably does have a lot of negative, mm. um, you know, impact on us. Yeah. But one thing that I think is important to remember is a lot of these studies, a lot of these things that they're trying to look out and trying to look at closer to see, you know, how it is affecting us. Yeah. Um it's not always very straightforward. Just like you said earlier, right. it's a double-edged sword. And um, you never know, like, people who already have um, struggles with mental health. So they, yeah. they might be depressed. They might be anxious. Um, a lot of times that le- makes them lead a less physical, a less interactive lifestyle. So they're a little more sedentary. They hang out yeah. at home. If you're hanging out at home, you're not interacting with people and you have access to social media, you are then going to spend your time doing that. And then are you depressed because you were depressed (laughs) and you were watching social media or are you depressed because you saw something on social media and made you depressed? So I feel like it's like, you know, it's this hilly battle. It's up and down and it's hard to find 
where it starts. Like, wh- how can you really define the starting point of, you know? Yeah. And so when we were looking through these things, men did a lot of great research with the uh, National Institute of Health, NIH, looking at um, how it specifically uh, greatly affects adolescence. Mm-hmm. So as right now, National Institute of Health uh, defines adolescence as 10 to 19, yeah. but there's extenuating uh, adolescence up to 25. Yeah. And then there's emerging adult adulthood, which is 18 to 29. So mm-hmm. you're telling me all the way up until 30, yeah. your, your brain is still developing the, some of these social interactions. Still developing your full impulse control, still developing self-esteem and how you see yourself still, which that completely goes, but there were so many things that just blew my mind all the way up to 29. Um, I always, you know, the old adage, you know, when you're 18, you're an adult. And now I look at 18 year olds and I'm like, (laughs) okay, I was not an adult fully yet. I, there was so much I still had to learn at 18. Yeah. Um, but I was like, okay, so like what? 20, 20 couple, 29, 29. Sheesh. And I mean, I look at myself and like, sure. There's times where like, I, I got some things right, but man, yeah. Uh, really till <laughs> around 30 and I'm yeah. still figuring stuff out now. Absolutely. Um, but like, holy moly, like, mm-hmm. you know, 30 is the new twenties, I guess, mm-hmm. because we're, we're, you're just really getting your stride where yeah. you start to figure things out and things seem less complicated. I feel like there's a point where, and it might be different now because I feel like the generations are getting younger and where they want to like know themselves. But Mm. it took me a while into my late twenties before I really wanted to sit back and like, you know, know who I was, um, work on my self-esteem, work on things like self-care. Like it wasn't until that point that I really sat down and kind of looked inward. Yeah. And so there's been a ton of studies now with this and we won't bore you with all the science, but yeah. <laughs> I nerd out a little bit because this is I've taken, you know, master level courses with some of the adolescent stuff that has been really impactful on the way that I think about it. And I don't have it all figured out, but um, they did studies with uh, 12 to 15 year olds adjusted for baseline mental health beforehand um, who spent more than three hours a day on social media. And you think oh, three hours, that's so much. But you scroll on, on at lunch, you scroll when you're on the way to home from school, you scroll at night before you go to bed, three mm-hmm. hours adds up real quick. Mm-hmm. And if you looked at the, um, the the health apps on your phone for your kids, you'd be surprised TikTok, Facebook, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, they all add up mm-hmm. um, depending on what they use. Um, those have doubled the risks of poor mental health outcomes, including symptoms of depression and anxiety. And those are the top two, the ones that um, the top two negative effects that social media has brought is more um, depression and anxiety. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the cons, um, the whys behind that. But those are the and I can think back and think like I hear a lot more and it could just be because I'm more in tune with it now, um, a lot more about depression and anxiety now yeah um than i did when i was younger as well there's just so many extra factors and there's so much more access to Mm -hmm. things exactly so when when they are that 10 to 19 they're undergoing so much of their brain development and uh it's the critical factors um they're like frontal core of the Mm -hmm. brain Mm -hmm. which is like the risk factors um the decision making and all these things So they're highly influenced by outside things. Mm -hmm. They have less of a a core for their own values at this point. And so that's why the 10 to 19 year olds are especially affected by Mm -hmm. this. Because if they see a trend that's negative and they're like, that's kind of funny, I should try that. Mm -hmm. Um, And they don't realize it. There's been over the last like five or 10 years, we've seen these crazy negative trends of like fighting or like, um, you know, pranks that are not positive things. Mm -hmm. All these things that uh, like... They wouldn't have done if they didn't have right. an outside influence. Yeah. yeah. If they hadn't seen somebody else do it and get this funny reaction and wanted to be in with whatever is trending. And that, and then when they're in that age range, that's when those developments of things of self are happening. And so then things like depression and anxiety start to show mm-hmm. because they're finally starting to experience, you know, those fluctuations of, of who they are mm-hmm. come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, it's crazy. And, and we've seen that, like, our own experience. I worked with um, with youth from middle school to college for, like, nine years. And just seeing 
middle schoolers versus college range, seeing all the types in between of how people deal with those things. Um, and you know, you see the keyboard warriors, you know, right. people that yeah. post things on social media that would never post it absolutely, or never say it to your face. Mm -hmm. And then I would like call someone out. I'd be like, Hey, you know, I know that's not who you are when I'm around you. Like, mm -hmm. why'd you post that? They're like, Oh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think about it. I'm like, that's it's around forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. you can delete it, but um, there's still ways to re bring that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, man, there's a lot there's of the, things the, that we don't realize. Oh my goodness. I'm going to anonymity yes. of it. Um, even though if you're doing things with your own name or your own mm -hmm. profile, mm -hmm. being behind the keyboard and not having to see the the like emotional reaction and this goes from kids all the way to uh, like grandmas and grandpas you yeah. know like all ages are guilty of this one because you don't have to see the effect that you're having yeah. on somebody by what you're saying prior to social media you said something about someone and yet might have gotten through the gossip chain but usually your group was much smaller then because you didn't have as much of an outreach yeah. um now you can say it in hundreds of people um, the people that you don't even know may be reading it or being affected. I'm going to be that guy. Uh, political times make it much worse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say the, the yeah. over 40 or I would even say over 30 range. That's mm -hmm. where they start to turn into the adolescents again mm -hmm. <laughs> to yeah. me because people post nasty things that they would never say in person mm -hmm. for a political reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're not going to get uh, political side or anything like that right. but both sides i was just like i'm just like you would never say that yeah. to the candidate or to anyone that believed that in person right. that's but, the thing that's one thing i always try to remember is like we are all humans and we have all mm -hmm. formed opinions based on what we've learned and taken in in our lifetime yeah and it's so important for us to try to understand where other people are coming from yeah um and my biggest thing my the thing that i try to do the most is when i'm having a conversation i'm trying not don't listen just to respond right. listen to understand what they're saying yeah um so that's my like underlying like i try all the time to like and i am many times on social media will be like start typing back and the my amount of times that i just delete whatever <laughs> yeah. i was going to say and sometimes it just feels good to type it out to type it and just don't hit send <laughs> and the yeah. um is it true is mm. it necessary yeah and is it kind like yeah. if you are about to say something send something and you cannot wholeheartedly say yes this is 100 percent true mm -hmm. Is it necessary? It might be true, but is it just going to hurt their feelings to right. hurt their feelings? Um, and is it kind? Is it going mm -hmm. to hurt your feelings? And are you doing doing that on purpose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things is that once you get to a certain point in life, you're not as much affected by social media because you're kind of set in your ways. Mm -hmm. You have your it doesn't mean that your overall social anxiety might not be affected, but um, you are kind of set in your ways. And so for us, that this is a way that to help impart this knowledge to the next generation, mm -hmm. those 10 to 19s, or, or like we said, the, the 20 to, to 29, um, where you like help them see that it's not all about the social media. It's not all about that comparison, um, the rat race of who's who, yeah. the keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak. It used to be just like whoever your neighbor was, you're like, oh, they got a nicer car than me. I got to catch up. Nope, they um, mowed their grass before. Yeah. And now <laughs> now it's like, oh, you know, oh, their kid got into this place or, oh, they did the you know, bought this new thing or oh, they're in this new relationship. And you can see that immediately. Mm -hmm. They can post in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, but the quote that I, I like with social media is um, don't compare yourself to other people's highlight reel to your behind the scenes. Yeah, because we're constantly seeing like, oh, man, you know, this month was really hard. We had some medical bills, some things like that. Took a big chunk out of our savings or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. And the other person's like, oh, we're going to go on a cruise to Bahamas. Right. Yeah. And maybe they're like, you know, multiple figures in debt. Mm -hmm. And 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 they're doing that like as a last stitch effort. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but like, we don't know that, you know, and and um, that and if it is, you know, if they are that much better, it's it's OK. Like yeah. Yeah. where we are. Yeah. Uh, but back to some of the actual things here. Um, We've seen that females are more affected. Is there a reason that you think that was? This is a generalization. Yeah. So um, the NIH actually had like a ton of charts per each like place. Mm -hmm. And the only one that male used more, and that one was pretty significant. It was like 65% male mm -hmm. versus um, 35 female. And that one was Snapchat. 
Okay. And all of the rest of them were, I mean, females were more affected. Mm -hmm. And and whether or not that's the ones being asked, um, right. are you feeling more depressed or more anxious after right. viewing social media? And they respond, yes. Okay. Um, you know, you men are taught to no, right, I'm to good. Avoid it. You know, so it, you you never know, especially if they are asking that younger yeah. age frame. Mm -hmm. um, but that what that did come out, and I think it's because as women, you know, we are taught to be pretty. We're mm. taught to be, yeah. you know what I mean. And we see it all of the time in advertising and marketing and all Sheesh. of the things. And like, there's this picture of what the perfect female should be, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then social media comes along, and so even women that don't see themselves are the, as the perfect female are doing everything they can, buying everything right. they can to put forth this image. Being influenced to uh -huh. buy that product, to buy, right. you know, do yeah. their hair a certain way. Yeah. Because it used to be, you know, you just had a magazine or a TV show yeah. and you're like, oh, that actor or that actress is beautiful and mm -hmm. I want to emulate, emulate them. Now they're seeing all their favorite artists, they're seeing all their favorite celebrities on social media mm -hmm. that have like a nutritionist, yeah. that have a workout routine, that have, mm -hmm. um, um, a stylist that are spending, you know, hundred thousand dollars a right. year yeah. on their look, and they're like, "Why can't I look like them?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's not attainable. Mm -hmm. Like their their literal job is part of mixed into that. Yeah. yeah. Um. And and guys can be the same way. Like you know, working out or physique or mm -hmm. things like that, where they're on you know steroids or TRT or or these things that. Um, not necessarily can't happen for most people naturally. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're turning around from like a mediocre body to the celebrity body in six months mm -hmm. through like all these things. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate the ones that talk about that in celebrities. They're like, it's not obtainable otherwise. Like right. I have a trainer working with me eight hours a day. I have a nutritionist. I have a home gym, like all these things. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, like that comparison so hard there. Um, well, some of the things you hear a buzzword, what doom scrolling, doom scrolling, <laughs> and we all are guilty of it, right? You need mm -hmm. that minute to decompress. And so you just get to your feed and it's, you know, the algorithm is just matched perfectly to you because mm -hmm. the amount of things that you stay at and actually watch versus what you, you go past. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it knows like when we got pregnant, both of our doom scroll highly started including baby videos, baby which was not something that, you know, was like. Like that no, before. We, we Googled, you know, bottles mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. carriers and things and like that. And we started, you know, if a baby video would pop up, we'd be like, oh, we'd look. Like and we'd actually it. watch it yeah. or share it to each other. And that made it. The algorithm's crazy. Yeah. There's actually been, well, we won't get into this, but there's been studies on the addiction. We'll talk about it a little bit. But the addiction of uh, social media and how they've socially engineered their apps to call to basically create addiction mm -hmm. um and Give you so a little dopamine hit. and the way they make the boop boop of like noises the way they do the scrolling the elasticity of the ui and being a ui person and, and enjoying web design um like mm -hmm. they've literally designed it all as like a little dopamine hit mm -hmm. to like ooh a new notification ooh a new scroll yeah. Bro go over to the top of my for you page again because mm -hmm. it'll whoop, it'll pull you back up yeah not like just saying like oh i'm addicted to social media like yeah. an actual giving you that addiction um and the the difference in that there there were studies showing that passive use so that doom scrolling mm -hmm. um is more connected to feelings of depression and anxiety because you're mm -hmm. just seeing other people's lives or you're just not connecting with anything you're just kind of blank facing it yeah but posting yeah. People that post more than they scroll and share things um, are actually more on the positive side of things, yeah. um, which makes sense because I, for the longest time, I'm not I'm pretty OK with social media. I'll scroll mm -hmm. a little bit, but not not like a, a ton, a ton. Uh -huh. um, and I used to post a whole lot because I lived far away. Right. And so I would constantly post for my family because mm -hmm. I'm away from my family you as a human, you want that connection yep. and I'm very connected with my family. So I posted to let my family, to let my friends around the world know what I was doing. And I yeah. even had a conversation with one of my friends that lived in Arizona and she was like, you know, I feel like even if I don't talk to you every day because you post pictures throughout the week, I feel like I know what you're doing and I, right. I know, like I feel like I'm still connected with you in that mm -hmm. way. And so, it, you know, for me, it, it did kind of help me feel more connected to people, yeah. even though I lived very far away from most of my, you know, loved ones. Yeah. Well, let's do some rapid fires, a little bit of pros and cons. Okay. Um, and what are you starting out? What are some 
pros that could be on um, social media? My, one of my biggest pros are, um, and they can be bad too, but if, if you find the good ones are yeah. the groups on mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you're finding a group of like-minded people. Um, you know, it can be like a minority experience, something that mm -hmm. you've gone through that you don't know anybody else in your real life yeah. that has gone through it. You know what I mean? And you can share ways with each other of, of coping, of yeah. just feeling like, understood which as we know is very very important yep. um so your you know personal experiences challenges achievements and like it just gives you this environment of other people that understand you i know i for one um joined a breastfeeding group yep. and a baby led weaning group yes um and Better those stuff. were just monumentally yeah. helpful for me because i could go on there and just search the group even if i just searched questions that other people asked yeah um i could usually find my answer and i and i appreciate it because i joined the the feeding one as well mm -hmm. and seeing not just the wins but people are like help right you know and I'm you don't really feel struggling. like yeah. my kid just threw the food all out today and ate nothing like mm -hmm. what do you do mm -hmm. um and just people chiming in saying hey this was something helpful or this type of food was really good or serving it this way or this type of bottle or straw or you know mm -hmm. was just helpful or uh, my kid went through it my kid went through it it's yeah. just a phase it just yeah. keep persevering you know yeah. just to hear the you're not alone you you're this. doing what you're doing correctly just keep trying yeah it's helpful yeah um social media is a is a great way um for to seek information about mental health mm -hmm. um you know people sharing their experience uh one thing i don't i'm not patting myself on the back but i've had people that have sent me messages before saying that when I've shared things about my mental health struggles mm -hmm. or that I've been open about, you know, I'm going to counseling for this or mm -hmm. I'm dealing with this, they say, Joel, thank you because then that encouraged me to go to counseling. Yeah. Like be seeing you do that mm -hmm. was something that helped me make that step to go through it within myself. And that, like, that's huge. Yeah, like, absolutely. if we can just help break some of that um, and share genuine experiences, mm -hmm. then, um, you know, it's super, it's super important and healthy. I'm not saying that like every struggle and thing you want to post, like today was hard. I stubbed my toe, you know, but like if we're sharing like genuine, uh, things that were like, Hey, like, you know, I was struggling with something. I went to counseling. It was really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, just something that can show your experience and then be a, a positive connection for someone else is super important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then on top of it all, you can reduce feelings of like feeling socially isolated, right? Mm -hmm. If you say you don't have a car or you just don't have a huge group of people that you spend time with in real life, you can make, I have people that I have only met online mm -hmm. that like were very like good friends. Like he, I had met online through friends and yeah. we were friends and like I considered him an actual real good friend in my life yeah. and i had never met him in person and i probably would not have without social media, social media. shout out quit the, quit the build right quit the build. <laughs> <laughs> um well uh the oh this oh, i'm looking at con sorry um improve and uh, community engagement this is great mm -hmm. especially if you're like an organizer of maybe like a nonprofit mm -hmm. or something like that being able to share like um events or fundraisers or things like that working for a nonprofit for nine years it was really great i was got able to share events you know free things for the community uh things for fundraisers things for asking for help and uh, when we want to go somewhere if we want to do something a lot of times it's because somebody put it on social media yep. and we're like oh did you see that this is yep. going on here here, let's go do that. Yeah. Um, which is something we wouldn't have had that access to. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's incredibly helpful. It's very helpful. Yeah. The cons. The cons, which we've uh, already touched cons. base yeah. a little bit on, on most of them, but. Yeah. And, and, and we're, and we don't want to make this like a doom episode where we're just right. smashing on it, but this is more of just like uh, an awareness type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and something that we both are dealing with ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter is kind of my one that I, I do more often than not. And it's like an information thing because Twitter or X, you know, has um, uh, so much information on yeah. it. And there's constant things about video games, sports, technology that I'm like, oh, did you hear about this? Did you learn about that's this? That's the one that's like a blurb, a thought that you're having right yeah. now. You just throw it up there and you move on. So yeah. I feel like it's the most 
definitely informational. It's the yeah. one that's just packed with like new things happening every yeah. second where the, as the rest of them are like videos that have to be taken and, t- and pictures yeah, and put up yeah, and, yeah. you know, nobody really uses Facebook like that anymore. Right. So yeah. Right. I, 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 if we look back at our stats it's from like 2006, it's like, I just ate a sandwich. And I'm like, right. no, the really good ones from Facebook <laughs> are the, remember when you started it with is, so it would say Amanda yes. McCumbie is my maiden name. Amanda McCumbie is studying for her next college exam. <laughs> like, wow, Amanda, yeah, that's, that's you go get her. You're going to get her. <laughs> yeah. Is enjoying Chipotle for the first time. Right. Like, cool. I'm glad the world <laughs> wanted to know that, Joel. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but the constant like surveillance of social media Mm -hmm. like needing to to check Mm -hmm. to see um can be a stressor Mm -hmm. and really can add to that potential of depression Mm -hmm. especially like um have you ever done this where you posted a a picture and then like every like couple minutes you're like i'm just gonna see if someone liked it Mm -hmm. i haven't seen that yet yeah see if anybody's noticed it it's really good uh and maybe uh you know back up a little bit when you were um in high school or college and you post something and you wanted to see like if that person you liked noticed mm-hmm. your your post you're mm-hmm. like i'm wearing a really cool outfit today like got some sweet gla- new glasses or whatever mm-hmm. and you're like you post the image you're like i hope cindy lou you know who sees my picture <laughs> you know uh, and if they do i'll put them in my top 10 on my yeah yeah <laughs> um and it can be like this thing where you just feel like you have to be connected to Mm -hmm. it. And Um, that's the thing. It's the connection. And that's, mm -hmm. I think the biggest point we're trying to get at is it's, I know we're like wondering where all of this has come from and it's that need Mm -hmm. for connection. And if we're taking it out of face to face life, social media is our next place to go because that's where we're at. Yeah. And so another con can be like, you can disassociate, you Mm -hmm. can disconnect from Mm -hmm. the emotions that you're feeling. And then that can be your escape Mm -hmm. and not a positive way. You're not dealing with anything. You're just kind of scrolling through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And then of course the one, the biggest one that everybody I think is the most aware of is that constant comparison. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you you're comparing yourself constantly. You're starting to feel like envious of everyone. Um, and then that in turn will make you more anxious about yourself, uh, more feelings of inadequacy, more feelings of just that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, that you're not as good as dot, dot, dot. And the self-esteem, um, can go down. And that comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. Like, because we're just looking at the idealized versions of people. We're not seeing their behind the scenes. We're not looking at Mm -hmm. kind of where they're coming from. We just see that, you know, weekly or daily post of like all the positive things that are happening Mm -hmm. in their life. Yeah. And, and it's the worst. Like when you know someone personally, you're like, I know of all the things they're dealing with and they're only posting the positive, but yet they feel like their life is going down. And sometimes social media is a way to like boost yourself to Mm -hmm. like put that best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And I get that, but also like then we have to internalize how to deal with that in our own lives um, and not just make that as a front to kind of trick people into thinking that we've got that everything okay. figured out. Yeah. 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 So, uh, with that, you have the fear of missing out, you yeah. know, constantly <laughs> like the FOMO. Yeah. FOMO. I have that just as a person. Mm-hmm. Like I just in- enjoy it, uh, being with people and in things. So mm-hmm. I have to, you know, be careful that I'm like, I don't need to go to that thing or whatever the concert. I just saw, um, there's an emo's not dead. It's a, uh, a cruise with like old emo bands in February. Lydia is going to be there. And Emery, <laughs> Maybe have a little bit of FOMO for that on social media today when I was scrolling. So, you know, we'll look into it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but no. um, yeah, so FOMO, it, that one is definitely one that I think almost everybody gets mm-hmm. feeling at least once. Well, speaking of the, the different camera we're using, it kind of overheated and uh, turned off. So we'll see if, <laughs> so if there's any time split there. If there's a little there. hitch there, we apologize. We- <laughs> <laughs> Um, But the last thing we really just want to point out Mm -hmm. are um, things that you can kind of pay attention to in your social media use. Um, See where you're at. See what you're doing. So the first one is time spent. And as you mentioned earlier, there is an app, a health app on your phone that will tell you how much time you're spending inside of social media. Yeah, both Android and mm -hmm. Apple have versions of that. And we're not going to give you like this amount of time is healthy. This amount of time is not healthy. What works for you? Do you... Are you sitting there feeling a little guilty? Like, you you know what? I do spend too much time. Um, if you do, try making an active choice not to. Yep. Like, try to 
keep an eye on that and see mm-hmm. if you can lessen it to a point where you feel like is a little bit of a healthier time yeah. spent. Uh, the next then is activity, like spending more time um, posting things instead of just scrolling. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean you have to post all day every day, but yeah. I mean like um, kind of have a better ratio mm-hmm. of that. Like, are you adding something to the world or right. are you just consuming? Right. And exactly. as creative people, we have to, you know, kind of take that mm-hmm. into effect all the time mm-hmm. um, because are we, what are we creating versus what are we just consuming? Yeah. Cause if we're just constantly consuming and not creating anything in the world, you know, is that beneficial to us, especially mm-hmm. if it's not like active learning. Yeah. So yeah. your uh, activity there. And the next one is investment. So mm-hmm. are you watching things and contributing th- to things that you're passionate about, yeah. that you love? Are you invested in these things? Are you watching videos? Like as an artist, I love watching videos of art, of people yeah. creating new and inspiring. fun and inspiring. Yeah, and being mm-hmm. inspired by that. Um, are Or are you just watching the lives of other people because yeah. you just want to watch the lives of other people? Or is it something you truly care about? Yeah. Do you really, really care about how Nancy is cleaning her countertop or is there something you could do better with your time <laughs> yeah yeah um and then uh the last one and this can feel harsh addiction mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. are you a- addicted is are you hugely impacted by social media access like can you live without it mm-hmm. do you need to do a cleanse where you take off all the apps on your phone and just check it like once or twice a day on a computer or a tablet? If you leave the room and go downstairs and realize mm-hmm. you left your phone upstairs, yeah. do you immediately panic because you then don't have access to popping open that social media? Yeah. Or do you panic because you're like waiting on a phone call? Right. You know what I mean? Like just think about, are you needing that yeah. a constant communication so that you can feel validated or yeah. not? Do, do you or... need to, and the only reason you're posting is because you need validation. Yeah. Um, I do need people to see you, uh, Mm -hmm. where you are. Um, and then does like, do you have to have that scrolling to calm down or disconnect at night? I mean, there's a thousand studies on like Mm -hmm. the effects of phone usage or screen usage before bed and how it like worsens sleep and blue light and all the things. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, do you have to have that? And do you need that the first thing when you wake up type of thing? Mm -hmm. Are those things that are going to be overall affecting that's uh, the one that I health. cut out. I do not look at my phone first thing in the morning mm-hmm. anymore. I, I pick it up. I take it with me, but mm-hmm. I go get the baby. I go downstairs yeah. um, and I don't. I wait at least an hour or so before I start scrolling or opening anything. Yeah. That's one of my the ones that I made the cut on. We were just laughing today because baby boy got up today and he was just like constantly laughing. La- he woke it up was, laughing. And, and it was he- so funny. <laughs> and it woke, she went to get, I didn't hear him. And she went to go get him and, and I just heard him laughing down the hallway. And then he saw me and started giggling more. And then he saw Brody and started giggling more. And then I was taking him downstairs to go um, change him and, and get him ready for the day. And uh, he was just like, ah! Just, just giggling all the way. Laughing. So maybe we, let's wake up with a little more laughter, a little bit less social media. Yeah, I love it. Good job, Ronan. He knew <laughs> yeah. what we were doing today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys so much. We hope that uh, this has been encouraging and in, in, in not feeling um, harsh or wagging our we finger at you. We just want it to be a little insightful. A like, little awareness. Yeah. Are you able to kind of step back and evaluate where you are and what you're doing? And mm-hmm. is it helpful for you? Yeah. Yeah. So... Hey, we're proud of you mm-hmm. because you're listening to something that's going to be an investment in your life. Absolutely. And that is something that's <laughs> going to be a positive effect. Mm-hmm. So maybe take some of a couple of these things and see if they can be helpful in your life. Yeah. I know I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to try to not uh, do social media in the morning and just Aww. go into and Enjoy jump into. Me. I'm going to join you. Uh, and, and, and just pop out and, and go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, and what are some like little things that we can implement in here today? Yeah. So, uh, we appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the podcast and sharing with friends. It's been a pleasure, but you are loved. You matter so much and, and you, you have so, so much, much value. value. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Emotional Support Penguins Mama. podcast. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>